Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to the Lunch and Learn on Stress Management. Um, I hope that it's very beneficial for you. I, we did run out of some of the handouts that has ant species and kill the ants. Did, does anybody need one of those? Did you not get? Okay, you need one? Okay, I'll bring it to you. And also there is a survey about the Lunch and Learn. Please fill that out and leave it in the back with us when you finish. Um, just some ground rules. Your cell phone should be turned off, but if it's not, please turn it off at this time. We want to be courteous to our speaker, and please don't talk to your neighbor during the um, Lunch and Learn. Um, Nora has agreed to stay after the Lunch and Learn, so if you have questions, um, feel free to come up and speak to her. We do have some freebies in the back, some deodorants in a back, and a box and a chair on the way going out, so grab you a freebie if you would like to. At this time, I would like to introduce Miss Nora Weigel to you. She's the owner of Nora, Nora's Herbs here in town, and she's used natural remedies for 35 years to help people um, feel better, and, and she really believes in that. And so at this time, if you'll help me welcome Miss Nora. Okay, um, when she asked me to speak on stress, you know, there was many different topics that we could go to, many different avenues we could approach the subject. But what I thought we would do is talk about our thoughts. ANTS, A-N-T-S, stands for Automatic uh, Negative Thoughts. So these are thoughts that we're going to talk about, nine different ANTS, and how our thoughts affect us and can cause our own stress because we cannot change others and what the stress that comes upon us. Now there's a, many parts of the brain and the thoughts, the negative thoughts come from the deep limbic system. It's a deep part of the brain, it's the size of a walnut. And if we were able to look at a person who is negative all the time, if we were able to look at their deep limbic system, we would look at them looking in their past with regret. We would look at them looking at their future with anxiety and pessimism. And they would look at the moment as something very unsatisfactory. So this is not something we want to find ourselves in. Their lens would be gray and gloomy. So we're going to see how we can take a person with that very active, deep limbic system and change it to someone with very positive thoughts. Automatic negative thoughts, ants are, they're cynical, they're gloomy, and they're very negative. And they keep coming sometimes by themselves. So we're gonna learn how to stop these ants. And some of these ants are actually fire ants. These are the most dangerous ones. We're gonna be talking about three of those. I know I won't pass that test on Tuesday. That's an ant. You've prevented yourself from thinking positive about it, and that th negative thought will actually keep you from studying for it because you've already doomed yourself at not passing that test. So see how you've prevented yourself from doing good. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You've convinced yourself you won't pass, so you're not going to study really hard to pass the test. And it limits your ability today, and it, it's going to limit your ability in the future. So we have to stop that ant. We're going to become pest control people by adopting a pet called an ant eater. You've seen the ant eater, the aardvark, has that long snout. He puts his nose in the ant hill and sucks up all the ants. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to suck up all these ants, the automatic negative thoughts. So we don't cause ourselves stress by our own thoughts. So if we find ourselves depressed all the time, maybe we are suffering from ants. Maybe we have an ant mound and we need to call our ant eater out. And if we're a positive person, then generally we would radiate, our, radiate maybe a sense of well-being, we're happy, we connect others, connect with others easily, and maybe we're even more effective in life. 
So see, we have a choice, and this is what we're going to find out. It's a choice in the way we can project ourselves with our thoughts. We're going to find how to control that deep limbic system. The acronym ANTS was coined by Dr. Daniel Amen. He's been on PBS many times. I had the privilege of hearing him speak several times. And it stands again for automatic negative thoughts. Here are some examples. You never listen to me. Just because we had a good year last year doesn't mean we're going to have a good year this year. You don't like me. This situation is not going to work out. I know something bad will happen. See how you're predicting the future? I feel as though you don't care enough about me. Everybody hates me. I should have done better. I'm a failure. You're late because you don't care. It's your fault. So those are different examples of some of the nine ants we're going to be talking about. And they limit your, per your ability to enjoy your life. They cause you to feel internal discomfort and pain. And they cause you to behave in a way that alienates you from others. And that is a stressful and lonely place to be. So since we can learn to control, to, um, control our thoughts, then it can affect our relationships with others. And don't we all want to have good relationships with others? Don't we all want to be happy? Well, we're going to learn just through controlling that walnut size part of our brain, the deep limbic system, we're going to be able to affect the way we connect with others. Now, did you know that every thought that you have sends electrical impulses and has a chemical response throughout your body? And these actually change the physical properties of your body. They're very real and they affect every cell in your body. That's pretty powerful. So when you burden your mind with negative thoughts, it causes deep limbic problems, irritability, moodiness, depression. So we're going to teach ourselves how to control and direct our thoughts in a positive manner. Our bad thoughts can make, make us angry, an unkind thought, a sad thought might make us cranky, and they release these brain chemicals. And your body reacts to every single negative thought you have. In contrast, these good thoughts your kind thoughts, your loving thoughts, your happy thoughts, they make you feel good. You actually have a physical reaction from it. Maybe think about the last happy thought you had. Your muscles relax, your heart beats slower, your hands are dry, and you breathe slower. Your body <laughs> reacted to a happy thought. This is demonstrated uh, by anyone who's ever had a polygraph test. You know, they hook you up. I've never had one, but they hook you up to different impulses on the skin. Well, what is it measuring? It's measuring your hand temperature, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your breathing rate, your muscle tension, and even how much your hand sweats. Then they'll ask you a question. Did you do that bad thing? Well, if you did, your hands get colder, your heart beats faster, your pr blood pressure goes up, your breathing gets faster, your muscles get tight, and your hands sweat more. But if you didn't do the bad thing, your hands get warmer, your heart rate slows down, your breathing slow and deeper, your muscles are relaxed, and your hands are drier. And you didn't say a word, did you? It's just the way your body reacts to that thought. Okay, so we're going to find out now so this, the reaction is not only when you're asked about telling the truth, your body reacts to every thought you have, whether it's about work, friends, family, or anything else. So your thoughts can pollute your ecosystem. So you need to be the river keeper. We don't want to pollute our system. There are even some physicians that will have said that having negative thoughts produce cancer. That's pretty powerful. So we need to take care of our thoughts. So we don't, what we're going to learn is we don't have to believe every thought we think. 
sometimes our own thoughts will lie to us. So we have to think about our thoughts to see if they're actually helping or hurting us. Okay? So here we're going to adopt our anteater and train our thoughts to be positive and helpful so we don't allow our thoughts to hurt us by the negative things we think. So we're going to change our thoughts and learn to change the way we feel. The first ant is all or nothing. That's, the, that's our first ant. Now this is the black and white thinking that leads us to believe everything is all good or all bad. It's a warped thinking. Maybe we're trying to diet and exercise and we are exercising every day. Here comes Friday and we miss exercise. And what do we say to ourselves? I knew I'd fail. I'm not good at it. Well, I'm just going to quit. No, that's not the anteater at work. We got to get our anteater at work and say, well, you know what? I missed today, but I'll be at it tomorrow. Don't defeat our purpose. The second ant is using always, never, every time, or everyone. If you find yourself, I will never fill in the blank, then you're acting as if you have no control over your actions. So the ant eater, never say never, and never use those overgeneralized words. Those words were always, never, every time, and everyone. Everyone thinks this is not in style. Who's everyone? Everyone hates me. Again, those negative thoughts where you're generalizing. So always, never, every time, everyone. That's ant number two. Focusing on negatives. If you find yourself d dwelling on the negatives at the expense of positives, then we'll be inclined to, be, to give up. So we have to put a positive spin on things. There's a story of a little girl named Pollyanna. Pollyanna lived with her parents and they had no money. And this is an old story. She wanted a doll. So her dad helped her write a letter and send it in the mail. And there was some language barriers, but she was asking for a doll. Well, what did she get? She got a pair of crutches. It's not what she wanted. It's not what she asked for. But they were very positive thinking people. So how did they put the positive spin on want for Pollyanna to get a doll and she got a pair of crutches? They were happy they didn't need them. That's the positive spin. So is our glass half full or is it half empty? That's what we have to think. We have to think about how to put our positive spin on it and it raises your mood. Actually changes the way you feel about the day and about people. Always look for the positive, ant number three. Now thinking with feeling. When you assume your feelings about something is true, you're not gonna question it, okay? So you have to think with logic instead because sometimes our feelings lie to us. I might feel like, you know, I just look in the mirror and I think, oh my, that's, I don't even want to go outside today. Look at the way I look. Or I feel like they're thinking this and it may not be true. So don't think with our feelings because again, our feelings can lie to us. We have to think are they true or not? Ant number four. Ant number five is guilt. Okay, we're not perfect people. We may have done something we're not proud of. Maybe we say we should have, we must, we ought to, we have to, and we're allowing these feelings of guilt to build up and control us. So we have to banish these feelings of guilt. Do what you can, but not at the expense of your health, or your sanity, so guilt. That's ant number five. We haven't gotten to the fire ants yet. One more, and then the fire ants. Labeling. Have you heard of parents calling their children dumb, stupid, other names? That's labeling. Well, people may be guilty of labeling others, but with this ant, are we guilty of labeling ourselves? 
Do we label self ourselves? I'm a loser. I can't do it. Then you know what? You're taking away your control over your actions, and you'll start to believe these. Just like the children that are labeled these terrible things. Never label your children. I'm a parent. I have a business. I have parents that come in my business, and I hear them label their children quite a bit. It's very disheartening for me to hear it, but can you imagine these children? Well, your brain is hearing these words that you're thinking, that you're saying about yourself. So we need to avoid labeling it. Get that anteater out. Suck up those negative words. Suck up those negative labels. Don't label yourself and don't label others because we need to flip that label. Otherwise, it's going to stick. And it does harm. Remember, these negative thoughts can cause physical distress and physical illness. And all that is stress. So don't label. Number six. Now our first fire ant, and we're familiar with fire ants living in Georgia, is fortune telling. Okay, you're going to predict the worst even though you don't know what will really happen. That's not good. We're not fortune tellers. We don't have a crystal ball that really works. Some might have a crystal ball, but we can't tell the future. I know I'm never going to be able to stick to this exercise program. You just told the future. And guess what? Your brain believes it. Tell your brain something good. These ants are so common, and they can quickly infest your brain. And your brain is stuck. So the problem with fortune telling is that your brain is so powerful that it can make these ter terrible things more likely. And you believe it. Now, if you allow yourself to get stressed out about something, the physical problem is it depresses your immune system. And the immune system, we know, is what keeps us healthy. So it can be something minor, more like a cold, fatigue, chronic fatigue, or it could be something major, like I pointed out earlier, where some MDs are actually thinking that the negative thoughts are causing some of the more serious illness, illnesses, as in our field we call it the big C, cancer. We don't want to go there. So ask yourself, what right do you have to be a fortune teller? You don't know what the future has, has uh, can, holds for us, so we need to be curious about it in a way of let's wait and see. Let's be positive. Whatever we're trying to predict the future about, try to take that piss positive spin on it, like Pollyanna. Pollyanna had a positive spin about the crutches. I would have liked to have known more about that little girl. Okay, now the next fire ant and ant number eight is mind reading. You might see people talking and we're going to read their minds. They're talking about me. I think I know what they're saying and it's not good. I'm reading their minds. Can we read minds? No, not really. So when you make assumptions about other people, well, we know what the saying is about assuming, so we don't want to go there. We have no idea what people are thinking, and if someone looks at us, it does not necessarily mean that they're judging us or think talking about us, no matter what we think. So take the positive again, and maybe they're talking about something that has nothing to do with yourself. Ant number nine, fire ant number three, blaming others. This is a big one. It's toxic to blame others. It's actually taking the responsibility away from ourselves and putting it on others. You're blaming them for your failures. And when you begin a sentence with, it is your fault, then guess what? It ruins your life. So these ants make you a victim. You are responsible for your life. You can't blame others. But by doing so, it's causing the stress, maybe, that you're dealing with. So the bottom line is, if only you had done something differently, 
I wouldn't be in the predicament I'm in. It's your fault and I'm not responsible, is what you're saying with the fire ant number uh, three, ant number nine. So whenever you blame for someone's, someone else, whenever you blame someone else for your problems, you are saying you're powerless to change anything. The blame game hurts your personal sense of power. So stay away from blaming others and take responsibility for the problems you have. Now, our anteater may get hungry, so we need to feed our anteater. Let him get rid of these nine negative ants, and you will feel better. So whenever you notice an ant entering your mind, train yourself to recognize it and write it down. That's why you have this little worksheet. You want to write down your automatic nerve, um, add automatic negative thought, and then talk back to them. And then you take the power and you gain control over your life. And you've removed the stress and you can put a positive spin on it. Other things that after feeding your anteater that'll make you feel bit better is exercise, even if it's five, 10 minutes a day taking good care of your nervous system, your deep limbic system, that walnut-sized part of your brain is part of the nervous system. The entire brain is part of your nervous system. It needs rest. And I'm a big proponent of natural um, health products, so I take care of my nervous system, my family's nervous system with that. But if you don't, if you don't have an anteater, you can get one. You can take care of your thoughts. Don't let anyone control your thoughts. And when you feel depressed or anxious, this little anteater form will help you to take care of these nine thoughts. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, and I'll be glad to discuss it more. Okay, that's it.